Hey there folks, today's project guide back here again and today we actually, if you could probably tell, it is pitch black out here. Uh, just get a nice little under the hood shot. This video, uh, I started this morning, started recording a whole mess of stuff and I started putting the edit together and I lost a bunch of my footage. So to give you a little heads up, it's going to be bouncing around just a, just a tad, but it's going to be on starting up speed density we finally have enough well i've learned enough about it i've learned enough about the ecm link tools and i've learned enough about how to set things up to get the car to run and drive around the streets and how to dial in a little bit of stuff here and there so i'm going to share that all with you um, we also have a new upper intercooler piping piece coming in because this one's got the uh, three inch gm sensor in it i want to clean this whole thing up we're actually going to move our overflow tank to, uh, the back of the radiator we're gonna get a uh, bottle similar to the uh, blue DSM that we recently saw the guy I just met down south a little bit uh, Ray we're gonna hook up an overflow bottle just like he's got we're gonna short route the upper intercooler pipe straight down through the side and I'm gonna build a intake that goes into that hole over there where the blue elbow is so we can get a true uh, cold air pull from the vent where the stock side mount intercooler was but anyway just wanted to give you guys a heads up it's going to be nice and bright in daylight it was a beautiful day today we got a lot done we got a lot of uh, dialing in knocked out and i will be sharing a portion of that with you guys here in the upcoming clips so i know it's like i said bouncing back and forth a bit but hopefully you get something from it and hopefully you can learn a little something about some of the tools that ecm link has to offer i'm very very green and new at this but through all the reading that i've done i've basically figured out how to get my car going without paying somebody a ton of money to do it for me so keep that in mind and if you guys have any suggestions always drop them down below in the comments box and hopefully you enjoy well without any further ado let's take a look at some of the stuff that we did today and hopefully you enjoy all right so we're in the car and the first thing that we're gonna have to do in order to dial in our SD to start it up and hopefully have it idle to start with this is uh, one of the methods that I've learned to do this a lot of reading boys a lot of reading uh, first thing you got to do is get into your car we've got to get in here we've got to connect let's do that right now now the first thing that we're gonna do is go into our ECU config live and we are going to add something there's three things that you need to have in your data log. We're under MAF right now. So the first three things that you need to do is make sure that under your log, you're logging your MAP sensor, which is boost in blue down here in the bottom left. You need to have your RPM. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of these off so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. You're going to need to log your boost. You're gonna need to log your RPM. And you're also going to need your SD ratio and we don't have that right here and if we right click it's not an option under displayed values yet so what we have to do is go into our ecm link live go to ecu inputs under captured values you can actually look on this displayed value item list or displayable items you go down to s and you can see sd ratio we're going to go ahead and add that to our device so we're going to hit ok we're going to go back over to our log and we are going to close our settings we're going to go to start stream and our stream is going to pop up now before we can do anything else we're going to right click down below and we are going to go to displayed values and we should find SD ratio down here in our list and there she is boom add that to the display hit OK and now in the bottom right we have SD ratio so that's gonna be an important one we're gonna change the layout of this a little bit see if we can change the preferences of it Perfect. Perfect. SD preferences we're going to change this color to I don't know something that we can see really easily a new bright pink and we are going to make this a thick line we're going to hit apply and we're going to hit OK. All right, so now we have our boost, our RPM, and we have our SD ratio being logged. So now we're going to go out for a nice long drive. 
we're gonna go all through the gears we're gonna go up some hills down some hills if possible uh, leave it in second gear drive it in a higher area of the rpm band just drive it a little erratically you know what i mean like leave your foot on the throttle for a little bit longer than you normally would don't drive comfortably try to drive a little irregularly you know uh, climb up a hill keep an eye on your knock sensor mind you uh, don't go ripping on this thing too hard yet because we're going to be doing a switch over but a lot of data that we can collect right now is going to be used to convert our VE table into a usable table based on what our math sees. So we're going to have our math sensor assist in calculating our volumetric efficiency table and we're going to be able to make the switch because right now if I switch straight into VE, the stock table that I have over here, let's see under speed density nothing set up for speed density but if i just jump over and switch this stock table is not going to run correctly it's going to make my engine either run super lean or it's just going to stall right out trust me i've tried so in order to save some headache this is the stock table right here this is the one that comes with ecm link um, we're going to leave this alone for now we are going to start up a nice long log and when we get back here i will show you the next step all right let's go for a nice long drive and collect some data now like i said before we're gonna drive a little different. We're not gonna be nice and smooth on the clutch the whole time. We're gonna ride out some of the gears a little bit further. I usually baby this thing quite a bit, but since we've got our tune nice and lined up, we're gonna give it just a little bit more than we normally do. And we're gonna leave it in gear a little bit longer. We're gonna collect a ton of data on this thing. Okay, so I've been driving for quite a while now. I'm gonna go ahead and put about 10 more minutes on this log. I've been going all over the place, up to about, I don't know, 40, 50 miles an hour here in town, nothing crazy. No highway runs yet. We're gonna save that for another time. I'm gonna head back to the house and I will show you guys how to go about starting this whole thing up under speed density. So we made it back to the house now, boys. And first thing we are going to do is, I'm gonna show you what all the logs are all about. We are just gonna connect and we are gonna give it a whirl with just switching over to speed density without using the ECM link tool. Um, we're gonna go into config live. Now this is the process you're gonna to need to switch things over anyway. You're gonna go into your math comp table and at the bottom where it says base math type we're under three inch GM math. We're gonna go down, we're gonna click speed density and we are going to also come into miscellaneous i believe yep we are going to disable the airflow smoothing with speed density operation make sure that box is checked now that that's checked i believe we are all set so we're gonna hit save all to ecu so now when we go back over to the math comp table we are in speed density so I'm going to show you guys what happens when you don't use this tool. Let's try to start this thing up. Now watch. We're warming up. Once this thing kicks on, she's running really lean. We're running like absolute crap. It's doing a little spitter, sputter, 16, 17 AFRs. So. We're going to shut this back off. This is how it's going to be. It'll try to correct itself some, but still, you want it to be in the in the best shape it possibly can be. So let's get back down here to our, our ECM link table, and I'll show you these little tools. What we're going to do is we are going to open up our log that we just made. So let me go over to it. All right, now here's our log, and as you can see, we have, let's see, we have our boost, we have our RPM, and we also have our SD ratio down here. So this is going to help us out a lot. What we're going to do is we're going to use all the data that ECM Link gathered by right-clicking 
and we're using the math at this point we're gonna click SDVE adjust and you're gonna get this little warning hit continue now you can see all of these cells that are highlighted here are the ones that ECM link changed everything that's in bold so that's what they're gonna start us with the ECU thinks that these numbers needed to be modified at these specific points obviously this is just to help you uh, start with your cruise I didn't go too nuts with it yet you can see it's basically just in the idle area and in the beginning of the cruise area so there's gonna be a lot of work to do on this table uh, but in order to get us started up you can still see that these numbers are all pretty low so we are going to go back to our log and we are going to click right click again we're going to do SDVE adjust combine and we're gonna hit continue and it does a little bit more work and it starts changing some of these values so that they are a little bit closer to what the ECU thinks we should have it was running really lean so what we're gonna do is we are going let me highlight these again sorry we're gonna click I believe it is control up and we are gonna add a little bit right there we're gonna go up to 60 and we are going to try to start the car again after we hit copy all to ECU track data log detach table always on top and we're gonna shrink this down and we're gonna start the car up and we're gonna start a log okay so now that we've done our right click SDVE adjust SD ratio which uses our math uh, and we've also done the VE adjust with the combined fuel, fuel trims we are gonna go Actually, you can see these uh, lines are all lining up real nice, and our AFRs are pretty close to our target. We're 14.67, 14.67 with it. We're in a like 0.3 or 4 of each other. But what we're going to go ahead and do now is go back in here to our speed density VE table, and we're going to start fixing up a couple of these spots. Um, we're going to try to make a nice smooth transition for a lot of these. Um, go through and you can kind of pick the ones that don't belong we're gonna raise this up just a little bit every time you raise a number up you're adding more more air more fuel every time you take and lower this number down you're taking fuel out of the system so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is just go through these individual cells that look like they're way off and we're gonna start making them into a smoother looking transition. Now, I'm still new at this. This is my first time messing with this, but I think I've got a pretty good understanding of what I gotta do to make this thing run correctly. All right, so I've done a little tiny bit of messing around here. My idle is nice now. We are all set there. Um, the tweaking is going to be in our cruising state, and we are also going to have to pay attention to our TPS Delta. Now this is something that I didn't mention very much on earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw it out there now. Uh, I'm gonna open up a older log here. I think I've got one that's got some information in it. The uh, TPS Delta makes a fuel adjustment based on throttle position here. So it will give you a numeric figure. Well, let me see if I can get a nice close up of this one for you guys. All right, so if we come over here, you'll see that TPS Delta is a dark blue line, and there's a little hump right here. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. Just take my word for it. So when you go over that, you're gonna see a numerical figure. It's gonna be zero to eight, and this one actually says one, and what those numbers actually correspond to are in your direct access tab. They are under base tip-in TPS adjust. So it gave us a one. These are the stock values, I believe, right here. Um, I know I don't think these are stock anymore. I've messed with them a couple of times, but uh, when it says one, it means this plot point on the graph. It wants you to raise it up or lower it or whatever. So if it pops up while you're out driving around, if you see uh, four or seven pop up, that means that it wants a little bit more juice there. So you raise these bars up to add more fuel you can lower them back down to take some out and the description is pretty straightforward adjust injector pulse width based on throttle position rate of change factor TPS Delta a loggable value which we're logging here 
Um, this table lists raw values that are proportional to the amount of throttle tip in fuel injected. Bigger numbers produce a bigger fuel squirt. So if you're ripping down the road and you're on the throttle, off the throttle, in and out, coasting and accelerating, and you see TPS Delta kick up a four, then you're gonna come in here and you're gonna click on the four and you can raise it up a point maybe two points whatever you'd like try to make these numbers linear so it increases slowly and uh, just see where you land uh, log again try to drive the same way again and see if uh, you get the same result until TPS Delta doesn't log you anything I just wanted to go over a couple other quick things with you guys now if you go back in and you want to adjust anything in your VE table say you want to adjust your entire wide open throttle area wherever you're picking it. Well, let's, let's go over here. Let's start with our idle. If you're trying to just change your idle cells, if you hit control up after you highlight them, it changes all of them. Um, you can also, I believe you can hold shift and down or shift and right, shift and left, and you can change what blocks you have highlighted. And that really helps you get through this table a lot faster, especially when you're making your adjustments. So keep that in mind. And if you ever are unsure of what you've got going on here, you can download stock tables if you need to. You can save these in an Excel spreadsheet if you want. Well, folks, now that we've gotten everything running correctly, uh, we're driving nice, we're cruising nice. I'm going to take this thing out on the highway in the next day and uh, probably tomorrow and do some more messing around i'll get some footage for another video that will be coming up shortly and the next one we're also going to be throwing the 750 cc injectors back in this thing and trying to dial all that in uh, that's going to be a fun time so make sure you stay tuned for that uh, we're going to work on sd wide open throttle uh, sd with bigger injectors and we're going to be upgrading our fuel system finally also the update to uh, the new guy's DSM, the guy I just met a couple days ago. We're going to have that ride-along video coming out, and boy, is that car nice. That thing's tuned on 30-something PSI. It's ripping. It's a, it's a real nice ride. I wish my GSX's interior and exterior was in such good condition like his. It's, it's fantastic. But anyway, guys, I hope this gave you a little bit of insight on how to switch over to speed density. I know this was kind of all over the place. We did a little ride along, did a little store run for the neighbor down here, fixing his battery up. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you give it the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Check us out on Instagram at todaysprojectguide.com. And don't forget, if you guys want to throw submissions to todaysprojectguide at gmail.com, any photos of your 4G63 project, your 2G, 1G, your Evo, whatever you got, throw us an email, send us some pictures, send us your handle. I would love to throw your guys' rides at the end of the next episode. I've got a couple couple really nice ones coming up, but uh, I'd like to throw them in there. If your project started, if your project's finished, if you drive it daily, if it's your fun little weekend warrior, I'd love to see it and share it with the rest of the guys on the channel. So make sure you send your submissions to todaysprojectguide at gmail.com if you want to see your vehicle in one of these videos at the end. And uh, if you haven't seen the other ones, take a look at the last few videos that we've put up. And uh, until next time, guys, you take it easy. And I will see you guys right back here in front of the laptop screen in the DSM. Take care.